Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in this Rive tutorial series. Make sure to check out the playlist down below in the description to watch all the videos. In the last video, we went ahead and created three milestone animations. So if I were to quickly play, so this is gonna be milestone one, this is gonna be milestone two, and then this one is going to be milestone three. We created three different animations. Now, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up logic to say when should these animations actually happen. So let's start. Now, the first animation that we have over here, which is basically this triggering of this dot and the star, we will do the star later on. Now, the first thing what happens is when we reach the first milestone, this dot changes color. So if I come over here to Figma, you can see here the dot changes color and sort of goes into a deactivated state, all right? So that is when we know that the first milestone has happened. But this will also happen if the score is 600 or above. So if I come over here and you can see here that if the score is equal to or greater than 600, then we trigger the first milestone. So in Rive, I'm going to set up that logic saying that trigger the first animation only if the value is more than or equal to 600. Now, how do we do that? Now, if you see here, if I play the animation, if I just go ahead and play it, you can see the animation happens. Now, from this point called entry, let's say this is just the door you're walking into. You know, there's a closed door, and when you tap on play, the door opens, and what do you see, right? That's basically how this works. The entry is like an entry to a door, and you walk inside the door, and what is the first thing that you see? You see the milestone one animation. Now. The condition that you want is milestone one animation should happen only if the value is equal to or greater than 600. So we have this arrow over here. Now, if I click on it, here we can set the condition saying that when you open the door, transition from that entry state to the milestone one animation that we have over here, only if the value is equal to or greater than 600. So here we can set this thing called as condition. And now there are no conditions. So if I click on the plus, I have to add a condition over here. Now the condition is essentially a property at the end of the day. And what we need to do, if I delete this, you can see it says no conditions added. I need to add something over here, which is basically a property. In this case, it's a number. It's a value, the score, right? Or what we want to call it. It's a number. So you want to come here to this section called as inputs, which is basically where all the properties of your conditions apply, all right? So for example, let's say you have a switch. You have an off state and you have an on state, right? So when the, the switch is off, do something, or when the switch is on, do something. So if I click on the plus, we have three types over here. We have a number, we have a Boolean, which is basically true or false, or yes or no, or on and off or we have something called as a trigger. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna focus on trigger right now, we will use that later. But in our case, because we are using a numerical value, we want to use number, okay? And this is basically the number that is going to drive the entire animation. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this final score. So whatever is the final score, trigger the animation based on this final score. So now if I click on this circle over here, and I can now add the condition of final score. Now, moving from entry to the first animation should happen if the value is equal to or greater than 600, okay? Now, at, the, at this moment, the value here is zero. Now, this is something that we can configure. Now, here in Drive, I have to configure it. Now, when you provide this input to developers, Developers are going to use this to, ident to input the score value. Now here I have to manually enter, let's say I enter 100. This is something that I'm manually entering. But when the user performs a quiz on Duolingo, a score is calculated. That score is going to be synced with this final score and whatever is the final score, the animation is going to change depending on that. Now here, because there is no quiz or anything, I have to set it myself. But this value, I can set it to whatever, and engineers can dynamically change it depending on the score the student, the user gets at the end of a quiz, all right? 
So now let's say I set the final score to be 100, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause this, all right? We wanna start fresh. So before playing this, I'm going to set the final score because the animation happens only after the score is set, right? So if you think of the user flow, the user performs a quiz, the user goes through a quiz, the user gets a score, and then the animation happens. So before the animation happens, the score is decided. So here I'm gonna set the score. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 100. So let's say the user got a score of 100. Now the animation should happen. Now when I play, nothing happens. As you can see, nothing is happening. And if you see this border, it's got a blue stroke, which means the logic here is stuck at this entry state. It's not moving to the first state because the condition that we set is that the final score should be equal to or greater than 600. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. Now, if I go ahead and set this to 600, so make sure that I set the score before I play. And now if I play this, now the animation happens because moving from entry to milestone one should happen if the value is equal to or greater than 600. Now in this case, it's 600. Now to make this a little bit more easier to visually represent, I'm gonna go back to the design mode and the default state, I'm actually going to go ahead and set that to zero so we can actually see how it would work, right? So if I set this to zero or maybe let's say, let's say I scored 10 points and I play, nothing happens, it's stuck over here. But if I set the value to let's say 700, which is greater than 600, all right? And if I play this, then the animation happens, all right? Now, with the same thing in mind, we want to transition from the first milestone to the second milestone. So I can go ahead and click here and just drag this node, all right? And I can move this over here to the side and I can put this over here. Now, if I now click here, you see this dot, I can connect these two. So now I want to transition from this state to the second state, all right? Which, which is basically the milestone two animation. So if I go to the milestone two animation, it is basically going from here to here, all right? Now, we haven't set any conditions, we haven't set any logics, but let's just go ahead and play and see what is happening. Now, if I go ahead and play this, you see that it directly played the milestone two animation. It didn't even play the first part. So if I pause this and play again, you can see it just directly jumped. Now, what is happening here is that Rai will actually play the last animation that is there in your chain over here. That's how it works. Why? I don't really know, all right? That's just how it works because it's traveling from here to here. Now, if you want to explain this in more detail, if I click open the console over here, you can see what is actually happening behind the scenes. Now, this looks very technical and scary, but it's actually very helpful because it's just English, right? So when I played the animation, it actually moved from entry to milestone animation one. It played the milestone animation one, and then it moved from milestone animation two to miles, and then it moved from milestone animation one to milestone animation two, and then it played the milestone animation two. The thing is, this is actually what happened in the back end, but we didn't even see it because it was so fast, all right? So what we want to do is we want to slow things down and go step by step. So let me go ahead and stop the console over here. Now, we want the milestone animation two to happen only if the score is 780 or above. So if I come back here to Figma, I want the second milestone animation to happen only if the score is equal to or greater than 780, right? So the second milestone animation is happening only if it is equal to or greater than 780. So if I come back here, I can set this condition saying that, hey, move from milestone animation one and do the milestone animation two only if the value is greater than 780. So I can come over here, add that same score. Now the score is not going to change between over here, right? The score is going to be decided at the beginning. So if I now choose the score and I choose greater than or equal to 780, which is the second milestone, then trigger over here. So now let's play this at various numbers. So I'm gonna start off with 100. If the value is 100 and I click play, nothing happens, okay? I'm gonna pause it. If I choose, let's say 650, which is greater than 600, but it's not greater than 780. Now, if I play this, you can see it only plays the first animation and it stops over here because it's not able to move on to the next one because the value is less than 780. 
Pause this again. Now, if I choose, let's say 800, which is greater than 780, it is also greater than 600. I'm gonna click on play, all right? And it now moves on to the second animation. Now it's happening, but we still didn't see the first one. Now, if I go back to the console, you can see that it actually did the same steps. So what we want to say is we need to define a rule saying that, hey, play the second animation only after the first animation is fully completed. Don't jump. Wait for the first animation to happen, then run the condition, and then move on to the second animation. So what does that mean? Now, when I'm moving from this animation to this animation, here we have two elements. One is called duration and one is called exit time. Now, both of these are probably the most important things to understand. And the naming convention here is very confusing, but I'm going to simplify it. If you just understand the difference between these two, which is actually very simple, you're going to understand how to set up anything. Now, what we want to set here is this thing called as exit time. And exit time basically says, when should you exit this one? Because you're transitioning from here to here. When should you exit this and move on to the next one? All right. So we basically say, when you're exiting this node, exit it after completing 100% of this animation. Now here, you can add seconds or you can add percentages. Now in this case, I can go ahead and say 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second. To keep things simple, a best practice is always to use percentages. So here I'm gonna say 100%. So now if the duration of the animation is 30 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, three seconds, 10 seconds, I don't have to come here and change it. All right, I just have to say 100%. So whatever is the duration, it plays 100% of the animation and then exits to the next step. So what would basically happen is I would enter, I would start over here, I would check the first condition. Here it is greater than 600. So I'll move on to this one. Here I will play 100% of the animation. Once that 100% is over, I will then check the second condition. What is the second condition? The second condition is, is it equal to or greater than 780? Yes, it is. And then I will play the last animation. So now if I pause this and now play this with the value of 800, all right, you can see it played the first animation and then the second animation and we were able to see it. So here you can still see the same things. It moved from entry to milestone one, played the milestone one animation, and then moved from milestone one to milestone two and played the milestone two animation, all right? Now, if I play this, you can see that there is some weird easing issues that are happening. So let me try to fix it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just change the easings of this. So I'm gonna do the milestone one animation. Here we have the progress bar, all right? I'm just gonna uh, select that. For some reason, I'm not able to select the interpolation, but anyway, I'm just gonna choose cubic and I'm gonna set it to default to be very honest, so. All right, and maybe I'm just going to add a little bit of easing towards the end. So if I select these two, I'm just gonna add a little bit of easing towards the end, all right? All right, maybe we can even slow this down a little bit. Or maybe, you know, let's just keep it as it is. Oh. Let me just reset this, uh, move this over, over here so it's it's a nice gradual fade. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. I'm gonna reduce this a bit and then shrink this also. Or maybe let's say what happens if we increase this. Okay, so this is, this is looking much better, all right? So you wanna select both the keyframes. I had chosen only the first keyframe, which is why the issue was coming, okay? And uh, I can select these items and I can just copy this and I can paste that for milestone two and milestone three. So I can just select both of this and paste that value over here and then select these two um, and paste that value over here. Okay, so now if I come back to the state machine and I play this, there we go. This looks much better. Now. The same thing, we want to trigger the milestone three animation, all right? Now the milestone three animation will have only if the score is 1000, all right? Because that's when you get three stars. And the milestone three animation is basically going from this state to this state, all right? 
So here in milestone three animation, I'm going to come over here in the transition. So this transition should happen when the previous one has completely exited. So I want you to exit when the previous animation completes 100%. So 100% completing this, and then I exit, and then we check the condition over here. What is the condition? The condition here is that I want the final score to be 1000. It needs to be exactly 1000. And then the third animation happens. So now we should be able to check all of this properly. So I'm gonna start off with, let's say 10, all right? And I'll click on play and you can see it's stuck at entry because the minimum needs to be 600. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna choose 650, okay? And I'm going to play and it just does the first one. It doesn't do the second one because it needs to be a minimum of 780. I'm gonna choose 900, which is greater than 780. Play, plays the first one, plays the second one, and then stops. Because the third one should happen only if the score is 1000. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say 1000, and I'm gonna press play, one, two, and three. And as you can see, now it does a full rotation. Now, what if I set this to 2000? What happens if I set this to 2000? Let's play. One, two, it doesn't play. Now the reason it doesn't play is because here we just set the final score should be equal to 1000. So 2000 is not equal to 1000. But in this case, it doesn't matter because in the code base, the user can never get a score of 2000 in a quiz. The, the user can only get a maximum of 1000 because only 1000 points are gonna be calculated. So here we can either say equal to 1000 or equal to or greater than 1000, it doesn't matter, right? Because in the code base, that limit is going to be defined, right? So now that we have this, you can just quickly go ahead and rename this to progress bar animation, okay? And if I play this, now we have this. Now at the beginning of every run, and basically this is what we call as a run, all right? I need to set the value over here because once I have set the value, the animation can happen. So hopefully this makes a lot of sense. Now in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and look at something called as a blend state because if the value, for example, here is let's say 400, I should still see the progress bar, right? So how do we make the progress bar go from zero to 400, all right? So we're gonna look at a concept called blend state, which can be quite complicated. So make sure to pay attention in the next video. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.